So I want to make one of those melty rugs inspired by some of Fega Med's pieces. And so I cut a rug in half and projected it up on the screen. And we're gonna try to make this all melty looking like. sponsored by Skillshare. So in part one, I cut the rug up and then I went and I kind of just winged it and drew it out kind of how I thought it should be. And then when I started tufting it in with the gun, I noticed it was tearing holes in the monk's cloth, but I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, we'll just go over it and it should work fine. And so I did that and it was just going hunky-dory. Hunky-dory? What does that even mean? Until I made a huge old hole in there. I thought if I like put rug glue on the back and then threw another cloth in there, maybe I could go through again and fix the holes and it kind of worked, but not really. But in the end, I actually didn't like the red. It was too dark, so I thought I'd just clean up and take it down and just start again from scratch. So here we go. Let's start from scratch. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So first thing, I decided I'd take out this little bar that I was using to make the rug smaller. And I just stretched the monk's cloth across the entire rug frame and just use whatever portion that fits when I project the image up onto there. So cool. With it all nice and taut, I just turned off the lights and projected the image from my laptop. And I took the part of the rug and held it up and marked it so that I could know the size and then size it to fit. And with that, I just traced it on there. And I did like a really kind of sloppy tracing job because all the colors aren't gonna match up with the rug exactly because that was kind of just like a render, I don't know, kind of just a guess. So then I had to go back through and mark on the, the cloth where the actual colors were. And so I did that. First problem I wanted to tackle was the red color. And so I went and got a bunch of different reds. Those all basically look the same, but they're just slightly different. So, kind of tested them, and I should have just brought the rug to the store. I'm a big old silly boy. Hi, it's me, silly boy Brian. Ha and that one's gonna match the closest. So next, I was worried about making holes in the cloth. And so I got a new tufting gun, and it's still the cut pile, and it looks like it was working. So I felt pretty good. Just go ahead and start. And so that's what I did. Look at me just starting. Then immediately realizing that I was tearing holes in the cloth again. So I went back to a different rug gun. That was a loop pile. And that's the same one I used in uh, the collab piece that I need to finish with Denzel Curigo. So I knew it would work. Except for it was loop pile. And I didn't want loop pile. I wanted a cut pile because that's going to match the rug. Um, like the original rug that I bought from Amazon that I cut. So I'm gonna have to trim the loops off of this, but that's that's future Brian's problem. Good luck. So if you guys want to see eight hours, probably more, I don't know, because this is just eight hours of filming, um, in under a minute, that's what you're watching right now. Fun. Honestly, it is fun though. I had a good time. I had some friends come to the studio and, and keep me company and, and help me, so that was really nice cute bonding time making rugs one nice thing is that by the end of this rug i was feeling pretty comfortable with that their tufting gun <laughs> so cool um okay anyways here on the front oh and also every time i had to move the camera i'd move lights which was a pain fun cool oh look at this little fire mario looking cutie it's, it's me a mario <laughs> something you couldn't really see is that every time i did a line i was actually holding up the piece of the rug with the back so that'll match up when I stitch them together. But before I do that, pass me something to say. Ruby, go lay down. Go lay down. Lay down. Good girl. So a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community where they have like a ton of classes to inspire and teach creators. So on there you can explore new topics and learn new skills or deepen the passions that you already have and just get them deeper or just kind of get lost in the creativity.
Sometimes I don't know what I want to learn today. So I actually just go to their browse section and they have a bunch of featured classes and popular classes. This one right here called the Productivity for Creators, starting a successful side hustle. So one thing that is cool, like even though I am like technically doing a side hustle, I can go here and see in the side and he has number six, he can talk about how to get motivated. And that's something that I could use. So people are gonna have different perspectives and be able to further teach me things I already do, already love. Another one that I thought looked interesting was this one. Find your style, five exercises to unlock your creative identity by Andy J. Pizza. Is his real name Pizza? Because that's incredible. But it looks like it has a, a couple different like exercises to help you get that and figure out how to unlock your creative identity. I also saw this one and I get asked a lot about what I do when I have like creative block. So this one would probably be good. Start drawing three fun freeing exercises to spark your creativity by Carly Kuhn. And Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and will help you find inspiration that will fit your routine. They also have an app so you can literally learn anywhere you go. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and Skillshare is actually doing something really cool. We're the first thousand people to sign up clicking the link below, we'll get a free premium trial of Skillshare. And right now, I feel like it's a great time being spring. You can go learn something new, do that thing you've always wanted to do, further your passion, or just explore your creativity. So cool. So I have this cute little sheep shear, and I just am gonna go across all of this here on the back to clean up the thing, and also it's gonna show these spots where I didn't really hit it very well. So I just took the scissors to kind of spread out the cloth and then come back over it with the tufting gun and That seemed to work. Also, I, I kind of got used to using the gun with one hand I felt like holding the handle sometimes just got in my way get out get out get out of the way mr. Handle so one way to check and see where like I've missed places I just put a light up behind the rug and where the lights shine through I just go back through and try to hit those spots a little bit better. Also, this silly goose kept on forgetting that the camera was behind it. Oh, you're just a silly goose. So I touched up those spots to my satisfaction, because I know that once I trim the loops off, I'll probably find more spots and have to fix it. But that is once again future Brian's problem. I feel like I need to like make a little jingle for future Brian and his problems. So I just coated that hole back with some rug glue and let it dry overnight. And now to trim off the loops with that old sheep shear. Sheep shear, sheep shear, sheep shear. Why does that word sound so weird? Also because it was getting so dusty, I tried to do it with my vacuum in my other hand, but then my arm got tired. So I'm just gonna be sneezy. It was working pretty well. I did have to go over like more times than I thought I would. And I thought maybe if I took it off of the frame, uh, it would probably be a little bit easier. And then also I wouldn't keep cutting holes in my rug. And I'll show you those later. Uh, cool. Good job, Brian Rin. So I just laid it flat and just went to town with that little sheep shear. Sheep shear. Oh, sure. I'll shear some sheep. I'm, I'm losing it. But with it sheared down to match the original rug, I just vacuumed it off and we'll see how well that it matches up. And actually pretty stoked with how well it did. I'm, I'm gonna figure out a way to kind of blend the old rug with this new rug. But before I do that, when it was up on the frame and I pushed really hard with the sheep shear, I went right through the rug. Cool, good job, me. In, in a couple different places. And so I thought that this was gonna be just a two-parter. But, it's gonna be a three-parter now. So, next part, I'll fix my little mistakes and then be stitching the old rug with the new one. Watch out there, bud. All right, so be sure to like and subscribe. Go ahead and hit that bell notification. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for our patrons.